tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me, as always, Ashley Hobley. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here in a week where Sony is mercifully quieter than some of the other companies in the games industry. Uh, um, I was going to say who's quieter. Nintendo has no, a been, Xbox yeah. has a game. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> Technically, Nintendo has allowed us this week. They've got an event. Mm. Indie Direct. I mean, they they're win. not making people. Sony's not making people angry this week. Uh, or last week. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. So. <laughs> it's true. Wouldn't, wouldn't rest on your laurels on that one. Yeah. Uh, in the trophy cabinet this week, a bronze trophy for Avengers characters, a gold trophy for new VR, oh, Hitman VR gameplay, and we hit a platinum for more Ghost of Tsushima content, and for free, let's jump straight into that, because it did the whole 11, 12pm Monday night, let's drop news thing. Yeah. Um, so over at the PlayStation blog, uh, who writes this? Darren Bridges, the senior game designer at Sucker Punch Productions. Um, so... Legends, Ghost of Tsushima Legends, is an entirely new experience. It's a separate mode that doesn't follow Jin or the companions from his journey, but instead focuses on four warriors who have been built up as legends in the stories told by the people of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima's single-player campaign focuses on an open world and exploring the natural beauty of the island, but Legends is haunting and fantastical, with locations and enemies inspired by Japanese folk tales and mythology and emphasis on cooperative combat combat and action so it is is a uh you can play the uh thing it, online matchmaking or invite your friends in groups of minimum of two maximum of four um there are a co-op story missions for two players then there uh, the, there is uh, up to four player Ways. survival missions and then the part that made me laugh out loud went on not laugh out loud, but nearly want to laugh out loud when I was reading this last night was the part where they're like, oh, if you can best the story and survival missions, you may be confident enough to take on the four-player raid that will arrive shortly after the launch of Ghost of Tsushima Legends, sending you and your, parties, you and your partners to an entirely new realm to challenge a brutal tail-firing foe. For Ghost of Tsushima's got raids. If you ever thought of one game that probably wouldn't have raids... In 2020 or 2021 or any time in its lifetime, I don't think I would have said Tsushima was, would be getting raids. That's for sure. Um, yep. What do you think of this? I mean, it's cool. I mean, obviously it gives a bit more life to the game that everyone, it seems like, has started a platinum and is starting to look at training and that kind of thing. So to have something on the horizon to keep that copy of the game, uh, it's good. And it, it, it Looks like it'd be interesting, obviously, very different to the base game, uh, more delving into that mythology, mythological side of the game, probably more like the uh, the longbow mission during tail during the, the game where he's a bit more, it, it's a drug affected vision as to why he's seeing certain things and that kind of thing, but that being the entire thing, uh, whether it's a completely different color design, like all the shots in that trailer are like very red soaked uh, or whether it'll look like that when we actually play it will be another thing. But yeah, very keen to check this out. Very cool. Uh, I'm confused. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be interesting to see how the, the combat does. Yes. In that co-op. That'll be interesting. Yeah. So, Cause obviously it's designed for single player and the second you start chucking waves of enemies and, there's no lock on and all these other sorts of mm. things. You're just going to have four people literally just kind of wailing and yeah, wailing around in thin air kind of thing. But um, either way, it's very cool. It's definitely not what, if you'd asked me last week, hey, Ghost of Tsushima is getting DLC announced next week. What's it going to be? I would have never said this at all <laughs> in a million years. So they definitely get points for originality and uh coming out of left field sucker punch um very cool that it's free as well obviously got to be interesting to see if and when they try and make some money out of people still playing the, <laughs> playing the sure. game though because they that's going to have to happen at some point maybe they'll add um 
a, a DLC to this that'll be extra missions cosmetic stuff, yeah. cos- stuff. I don't know. Or they may be working on a um, proper DLC. Ex- proper expansion, which they usually do for most games. Like every Infamous had a expansion, full on DLC of some sort. And the one, the one that's actually the best in my opinion, which would be fun for them to do. Like, if they want to continue the theme of just exploring the, the weird and wonderful but take it back to the single player, um, they did, the first Infamous had a DLC called Festival of Blood where um, you basically became a vampire and that was the entire thing. And it was like a three to four hour f- full experience. So um, it's not the first time they've explored just sort of outside of what actually makes sense for the game. Uh, but that'd be cool. So... When six this come out doesn't have a launch date. Doesn't does have it? a launch date. No. no. Uh, I just says at the bottom we have so much more to share on legends, including details on character classes, customization, and more. Yeah, maybe they'll announce like paid cosmetic stuff that then later. Um, cool. All right, so Avengers. It's a game. People are still playing it. Apparently, it plays like absolute crap on PC, from what I've been saying. But uh, <laughs> that's that's a whole different thing. Uh, PlayStation Lifestyle writes, Data Mine hints Marvel Avengers will get Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, and Winter Soldier as playable characters. Code, code, code embedded within Marvel's Avengers beta features information about 15 characters that will supposedly become playable post-launch. The Data Miners who were able to dive into the PC's beta in a working stumbled across names such as Ant-Man, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Scarlet Witch, and the Winter Soldier as listed as unlock playable characters. YouTuber Sanders Presents posted the video over the weekend walking viewers for exactly how he found the code. Partway through, he began listing the 22 characters ma- marked as unlock playable characters. Six of the 22 are known quantities, the group of Avengers that are playable in the beta's A-team segment. The other 15 characters will pr- presumably arrive in DLC. So the full list is Ant-Man, Black, Black Panther, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, Captain America, Doctor Strange, Falcon, and Hawkeye, Hulk, Hulkbuster which is apparently different to Hulk, even though Iron Man's special ability is Hulkbuster in the game, which is Kamala Khan, Kate Bishop, a uh, different version of Hawkeye, Marvel, Mockingbird, Quake, Scarlet Witch, She-Hulk, Thor, Vision, War Machine, Wasp, and the Winter Soldier. Interestingly, another data miner unearthed the same list of characters in their search that the two lists corroborate one another, suggest each character variant in the game at one point, blah, 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 blah. Uh, any, any of the, the characters stand out to you of intrigue? No, I mean, it was pretty, that looks like a solid Avengers list. Like, I mean, there are a lot of characters there that you would kind of expect. I think it'd be interesting to play characters like maybe Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch, which are more magical projectile types as compared to the current lineup. Uh, even like Ant-Man and Wasp, how do they... Utilize their sort of powers. Yeah, how do they play? Yeah, and maybe even Vision. It was was an interesting character. Uh, Again, looking at that lineup, that looks like the type of lineup they had initially, and it even adds more credence to my idea that they Sony went to to Crystal Dynamics and say, "Hey, put Spider Man in the game exclusively for PS4," because all pretty much everyone on that list, I'm pretty sure, has been. Like a staple of the Avengers, except maybe well, Kate I had Bishop no, and Quake. I, and <laughs> yeah, I had no idea who the fuck Quake, uh, Mockingbird and Quake was. So. Mockingbird's like the female Hawkeye. They're uh, like partners in S.H.I.E.L.D. for a long time and that kind of thing. Uh, Quake is probably best known. She's one of the characters from... She's an Inhuman, but she's been played by Chloe Bennett on uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for several years, so... Oh, is that Chloe Bennett's character? Yep. Oh, I thought she was just a made-up character. She was initially, and then they made a Quake. <laughs> oh. Or, or they had long-term plans to, to reveal she was Quake. Okay. Um, the other one that stands... That, that, the other one that I thought was interesting would have been, like, if you have Captain Marvel and then you have Marvel, like, yeah, original... Yeah, that's interesting. Original version. <laughs> yeah. That would be a bit weird. Um... But yeah, maybe yeah. I I I agree that Square Enix probably just pulled Spider Man out. Square Enix took the money. What do you? Gonna, yeah. <laughs> what, well, you, what are you gonna do? Smart move. Um. But also like, another thing: just don't put your games on PC because you know. Yeah, everyone's. Or your secrets get revealed. 
I wonder what they could do to make Winter Soldier play different enough. Like, wouldn't he just, wouldn't he just be button mashy, like, just smash to punch things? Like, Yes. It's interesting because he's, like, a very gun orientated character. Oh, yeah. So it's not very. None of the other characters have got guns. guns. Except, well, I guess. Technically, War Machine Iron and, like, Man and Iron War Man, Machine. technically. Yeah, they probably yeah. play very similar. Uh, I, I assume mean, Black Widow and Mockingbird would play very similar. Yeah, and then once you add Hawkeye Obviously, and Kate Bishop. And Kate Bishop, they'd play very similar, yeah. Yeah, then they're not guns, but yeah, close yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if some of these are uh, maybe announced soon. I think that I think they said old characters were three, uh, free, though. Wasn't that the... Yeah. Wasn't that the thing? So all, all of these will be free, even if they're not there at launch. And the, they they are going to make their money off you from buying all the alternate costumes and such. So, yeah. Um, next story I thought was just random. So I had to bring it up. But it's interesting. So <laughs> there's a brand new release on the PlayStation 3 this week. Right? Woo! Push Square. Wait. P- PlayStation 3, did you say? The Yes. The PlayStation. Not the 4. The PlayStation 3. The PS3. The Spider-Man the, font on it. The Spider-Man font. It is a Spider-Man font, actually. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's not even a meme. It actually is. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, it's just straight up the Spider-Man font, which is weird. Um, I cleaned up my room yesterday, and I came across my box with my random bits of bobs in it. I'm like, oh, there's my PS1, PS2, and I went and put my PS3 in that same box now. Fuck off. I know we're approaching the PS5 generation, but I finally was like, no, nah, not happening. This is taking up too much room, especially because my PS3 is the, I have a fat original one. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird because now, now I have in this box, I have original PS1, like the fat one. Yeah. I have a uh, slim PS2 um, because I know that's the only PS2 I ever. We had a original PS2 as a family console. Yeah. But then my PS2, I brought I brought off someone from school, and it was the slim, slim one, yeah. And then I, now I've got a fat PS3, which never broke on me. So sh- shout out to that. And in case anyone's wondering what happened to all those Wonderbook games, you're going to play them, Dylan. I put them in the <laughs> box. I put it in the box. One day. One day, but they're taking up too much room. I'm running it. Let's need to no. declutter a bit, you know. One day when we blow up, and we could do. Yeah. Big streams, you can do that. That'll be book. the longer it's. It's like a fine wine. Those Wonder Book games. <laughs> the longer I, I wait to do them, the more random and interesting they'll be. Yeah. Because doing them now, oh, it was only last generation. You wait until I do them at the end of the PS5 generation when the PS6 is now. So everyone's like, "You're playing a PS3 Wonder Book game? What the fuck?" Yeah, it's I'm like, like so. re- it, it'll be retro by then. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, PS1. Now, retro, now so. it's just old. But next generation will be retro. I mean, I think, yeah. I think it's like every second generation is counted as retro the way people talk about these days. Yeah. Because you know, people talk about Crash Bandicoot and stuff. Retro like they're retro games. And I'm like, are they though? I mean, if that's the rule, I guess that means the PS2 is about to technically become... Oh no, PS2 counts as retro then. About to be. Probably, yeah. Yeah, sure. PS2 is retro as soon as PS5 comes out. That's the ruling. Uh, anyway, so this game's coming out on PS3. It's called Shakedown Hawaii. Uh, it released on the PS4 and PS Vita last year, but it's been ported to Sony's old console because V-Blank Entertainment can. If you already own the game on the PlayStation system, then the PS3 version will be completely free via cross-buy and will be able to synchronize your save between the two v- versions. Shakedown Hawaii will also be watching on the Wii U and Nintendo Wii. Meaning these launches on discontinued consoles must be a bit of a laugh for the developer. The team's previous game, Retro City Rampage, did a similar thing as it came to PSP and DOS, of all, of all things, back in 2012. The thing I don't get about this is it's not really a free laugh. Like, to port things it's requires... It's a costly laugh. <laughs> yeah. It not only does it require effort, but then you have to pay to get it classified and launched on consoles for different regions as well. So it's a very costly, like several, like thousands of dollars 
kind of shit gig. Shits and giggles. But they'll all be, be remembered as the last PS3 game, potentially. I mean, I suppose if that's what they're... It'll be a cool trivia question. What was the last PS3 game? And everyone will get it wrong. But it was Shakedown Hawaii, which released in 2020. <laughs> which, when you say it like that, is quite funny, yes. Yeah. I would love to. I would love for this story to continue by someone now um, bringing something else out to the PS3. And then, like, a year from now, you see that the same developer's back trying to be the last PS3 game once again. Lol. Uh, all right, so some, we've got some PS5-related stuff to run through here. Firstly, Press Start has up uh, the covers of, what is this, five new PS5 games. I think last time we 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 were talking about how, obviously, with Spider-Man, with the, the color scheme of the, the cover, mm. it maybe didn't... Uh, project the the best image for that i think these covers personally so we got planet coaster console edition overcooked all you can eat watchdogs legion far cry 6 assassin's creed valhalla i think all of these look pretty good i think the ones that look the best i think like i i, I think the ones that look the best is probably if you get the assassin's creed valhalla and the watchdogs legion because it got the black and white, because you got the white strip up the top. I actually think it kind of lends itself to it. I think the ones that look the worst, as noted here, is like Far Cry 6, because it's got the giant orange text, and it's like right on the thin line of where the white is, and the PS5 lines up with it. I think that what looks the worst. Which is, I think that the higher you have like a really bright color to the, the PS5 strip up the top, I think that's when it looks kind of odd. Yeah, what 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 do you think? That do the, these look better than the Spider Man and stuff? I mean, I think it's just a thing where you just need to like like get used to it. Obviously, it's a, quite a different shift to the current <laughs> box art. Uh, obviously, that white strip is very prominent. Uh, yeah, so I mean, they look fine. We'll get used to it, and then it will be nobody to think about it anymore. Probably. Oh, we're definitely going to get used to it. But until then, we have to talk about everything. We have to talk about everything. <laughs> I, I think the, uh, the only thing weird thing, obviously, with the angle they're showing, is like the PS Five logo on the side of the case, mm. like sticking out, not that being in be line with the strip on the top. Could that could be tricking your mind, maybe helping yeah. it? But like, for example. I think the Far Cry one is one I think that looks the worst. And I'm putting that down to the text being so close to the line. Whereas even these other ones, I obviously think Look. the Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed, even though the text is close because it's white and black, it doesn't bother me. But then yeah. the Overcooked one, because the Overcooked text isn't running light right against the line, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's when the font is like a really bright color that's not white or black and it's sitting on that line. That's what... I'm putting it down to. There's my scientific. All right. So <coughs> put all your titles down the bottom of the box. Yeah. That's what Dan's I'm saying. I don't think it's going to happen, but no, sure. probably not. Um. So next story comes from PlayStation Lifestyle. Uh, to cover it, that they basically cover something that went around Twitter the last week. Everyone was screaming about the PlayStation Five not being able to run 4K. Uh, so they wrote sometime last week, known insider, ascetic gamer, aka Dust Golem. Love all those names. Claim to have heard from a source. Source, quotation marks for audio listeners. Uh, that the PlayStation 5 is struggling to achieve 4K. According to him, Sony players should expect fake 4K on the upcoming hardware. A statement that he later stressed was just something he had heard and couldn't confirm. Love when a story goes from having a source to I heard it. Long. Uh, Dust Golem has since been stripped of his mod powers on Reset Jeez. Era. <laughs> wow. Reset Era, like, Don't crazy. fuck around when you, you're telling porcupines, you know? Dropping them yeah. over on Reset Era will get you banned, <laughs> stripped to your mod powers. <laughs> they took his badge, they took his gun. <laughs> <laughs> took all of it. Uh, but we won't get into what he said slash she said. What's important is that at least one developer has since jumped into the debate and rushed uh, rubbish reports of the game struggling on PS5. 
Uh, Team Kill Media, who's developing the Cosmic Horror First Person Shooter Quantum Era, uh, said that the game is currently running at 4K slash 65 to 70 frames per second unoptimized, and it will achieve its goal of 60 frames per second. So someone on Twitter replied to some post or whatever, and then said, Quantum Era, a corridor shooter is struggling to get 4K 30 on PS5. It's trying to get 4K, which means downgrade, etc., to optimize to run on PS5. And then Quantum Era responded, not sure where this quote comes from, but it didn't come from us. Quantum Era is currently running at 4K, 65 to 70 frames per second. Unoptimized, we will be hitting our goal of 4K, 60 frames per second. And there will be much more than just corridors. Lol. In a subsequent tweet, Team Kill said that Quantum Era is being built for the PS5 and will be scaled back to the PS4 and not the other way around, saying, quote, though we plan to bring Quantum Era to the PS4, we are developing it for the PS5 tech and f features first and foremost. We will not be holding back to make it work on the PS4. The PS4 version will be a downgraded version of the PS5 version, but will still look amazing. So yeah, I so saw. I don't. I never. I don't know where all these rumors start. I don't know. I see them come across my Twitter. I never see any. Um. I never see any. Like, there's never any story. There's never even any any proof in the pudding. And then I wonder why people. So many people are retweeting and freaking out. I'm like, what are you? What are we all going for? Like, where's this information come from? Things. But I will say on this note. The uh, the whole uh, to to help people out there listening, um, calm the fuck down a little bit. There's going to be games that run at 4K for real, and I still think we're going to get some games running at fake 4K. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get like like if something like Cyberpunk even had to run kind of fake 4K. Like maybe it has to, maybe it can do 2K 60 and then up do the fake up to 4k stuff like that but i wouldn't be surprised to learn that some of bigger the, the bigger games struggle for 4k because i know i've said this a hundred times but i'll say it a hundred times more because until day we get a fucking release date and i can stop talking about it because the console is actually releasing computers still struggle to hit 4k i'm sorry you can have a 2080 super duper RTX card that costs you 2000 fucking dollars and you'll still struggle on certain games to hit 4k, especially the moment you turn my baby on, also known as ray tracing, beautiful lights, bouncing around. That was some ASMR shit, basically. Uh, the only other thing we got this week was, uh, Xbox, uh, Sony got annoyed that Xbox leaked their, their controllers, then they were like, fuck, should someone leak our controller quickly? So, uh, someone on Twitter, who, uh, whose Twitter is at GalaxyRain666, uh, who said they work for a, basically a, a third party, third party controller manufacturer, um, in China, of some sorts, uh, has leaked the tr uh, the controller because they've got one for testing or, 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 or what have you of course i didn't say where they work because i would presume they would get fired but they posted up some pictures of the controller and they had some follow-up notes saying you know oh the haptic feels good and all this stuff that we've heard a million times before the the two things of note was firstly the battery capacity is 1560 ma mah mah um which is substantially bigger than the current DualSense controller doesn't mean it's going to be uh, require less charges because who knows if it actually uses more battery power you but, would assume so with yeah like you would you would assume everything it's got would probably use more so probably nothing to get super excited about you're probably still going to need to charge your, your controller every four hours or whatever the current ones run for or you get two and then you just rotate them out do what you need to do yeah uh and then the other thing of intrigue was the fact that the face buttons didn't have the at least in this controller which may or may not be true for the the release version like this might might just be because of the version he got but the the face buttons didn't have the uh like the colors in them in the, yeah. in the controls well, i don't think any of them have had that we've seen so far have had the colors which would be an interesting, purely 
interesting from a design point within the games? Like, do they show? Mm. Are they going to keep the same colors in the game? Or are they just going to have a triangle? You would assume they'd have to keep the colors. I don't know. Like, it'd be weird if there wasn't no the colors. I don't know why they don't have the colors. It's a bit weird. I don't, like, I know there's been a couple. I think there's been a couple PS4 ones, special editions, maybe that got rid of the color for certain reasons, but. They've always had the colors, so I find it, yeah, I just find it quite odd. Especially, like, in the same way where you can go to, into EB Games to pick up your DualSense controller, and you can buy one of those LED things where it's got all the, the, yeah. the symbols on it, and they're all lit up colored. Like, kids are going to grow up not knowing what the fuck, <laughs> what colors the, kids these days are going to grow up no, not knowing what colors the, the sacred symbols are. Yeah, there you go. Just have to color them in yourself. Um, I would suggest not doing that, but if you've got the money to, <laughs> to to try and see what happens, then yeah, go for gold. Yes, we are for the players. All right, we got three stories in the VR section t- today. Whoa, shit's going off, crazy! Ooh, dang it. So, firstly. Uh, there was some more v- uh, Hitman VR gameplay dro- proper gameplay dropped because I don't know if you want to count what we saw in that original no, release. That was cinematic tri- trial, yeah, it was very cinematic. But they actually showed off some uh, gameplay. So, uh, Upload VR posted up the video. That's where I saw it. I don't know where the fuck it came from. They posted it on their YouTube. I have no idea where it came from. Uh, but they write, a new developer video for the game arrived today, giving us a closer look at the new gameplay elements. We saw a few more levels beyond that what was revealed in last week's announcement, but also members of the IO interactive team are on hand to discuss the work in the VR version. It sounds like IO is giving the, this port the proper treatment. For example, the developers confirm that the game's melee attacks aren't just executed with a simple button press, but an actual swing of your hand. Shootouts, meanwhile turn into physical cover-based affairs and stealth will see you crouch down in tall grass uh, plus several moments in the game look incredibly immersive like hiding in a closet to wait for targets though they definitely touch on VR's more sinister side what the developer didn't touch on however was supported plans Hitman 3 is coming to both PS4 and PS5 uh, but they did not confirm if the PS4 version of the VR thing would come to PS4 I'm going to assume it will because I feel like that's just what makes sense now um did you watch this video give it a uh, quick skim quick. through it um yeah i mean it looks like it works <laughs> obviously that's a plus um how it actually functions when you actually play it like there looks to be a lot of walking around and that kind of stuff um i think it, it sounds like you'll be playing with the move controllers which doesn't excite many people with Hope. <laughs> Let, uh, put an asterisk in that because uh, there's no point in the video that they show move controllers that I can That's see. That's true. They show the PSVR headset, but at no moment do they actually show the move controllers. Well, if you, you want me to put my, said you had to swing your arm to do melee. Yes, but I guess they never said with the move so. controllers. So I, I'm just putting my tinfoil hat on. Okay. In hat, it, like imagine a world where you're just hoping. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not impossible. Yes. If, if I was to rank which we get first and upgrade to the controllers or the PSVR 2, I would surely, surely the upgrade to controllers would be higher. You know, like I feel yeah, like you could, you could release new move controllers or whatever that they call it without kind of overshadowing or put, like confusing the market of releasing the PS5 at the same time, like roughly the same time kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it looks interesting. See, uh, I don't think you'll be able to be as creative, potentially, as you would in third person, but you'll see. I don't know. It's very confi- it it yeah. sounds, obviously, it sounds more difficult because you won't be able to, like, I assumed in third version, third person, you could, like, view more of the space, yeah, yeah. whereas when you're in first person, you're, like, obviously in first person. <laughs> yeah. Your vision is cut. Yeah, I, I don't know. It depends. It depends what I guess what and how which sort of things they could program. Like, oh, anything that involves like poisoning something, you could probably still do that. Anything that involves 
I don't know, like turning a vowel for something. Surely you could still do that. I don't know. It okay. depends. Maybe they've had to delete some because it's too I think, much. No, effort. like planning and that kind of stuff. I think it'll be. It'll just be harder. Different. Yeah. Just be harder, I think. Um, the the part they point out in their, their article here where they say the sinister side of VR, there's there's a part in the, the gameplay where they're talking about, oh, you know, like because you're in first person everything feels more dynamic and like you're there and it's you know somewhat scary and whatever and they have this piece of gameplay where um agent 47 is hiding in this closet in a person's bathroom inside the the beach house or something and then a man and a woman walk in and like one of them i can't remember which one's which but one of them jumps into the shower and then oh it's the man the man jumps into the shower and then the woman like starts doing her makeup and stuff and you just it's gameplay where hitman Agent Forty Seven is just creepily watching through the the gaps in this wardrobe or whatever. It's like that's a bit uh voyeur voyeur uh, nasty stuff. But yeah, then you they'll creep in and kill them. Uh, which I think doing stuff like that, certain kills and certain sort of uh, stalkings and stuff like that, is just going to feel more weird i guess doing it yourself in first person especially moments like that where you gotta sneak into someone especially if you have to like <laughs> open up the shower door and, like fucking shoot the dude or something i don't know like it's gonna feel a lot weirder than just playing it in the third person version where it kind of feels like sandboxy kind of like more of a cartoon and then they, they showed off gameplay where um they're like oh you have to like crouch down in real life to kind of sneak through grass at certain points but because the grass is so high you'll kind of just be creeping along creeping along and next second you might just be at the feet of someone and they may not see you and you'll only just notice them and what how do you go to get around them mm. um a, a lot of it and the, the, the other thing that i thought was what, watching all the gameplay they have in it it all looks very good like too good to be true kind of thing that that's the thing i'm very conf- like in the video they they do have psvr headsets on and they're talking about it from that front but it does make me wonder if they it's being developed for other vr headsets as well and sony's just paid for some sort of like pseudo exclusive association yep. type i would thing. assume so yeah yeah because it makes more sense for them especially to release well, it on uh, everything to- all the effort to only put on PSVR seems like a lot of effort yeah. for for just that, yeah. So, th- But that has me then worried, like, okay, so are we watching gameplay that's not actually PSVR gameplay, but they're just showing the headsets because they want PlayStation, Sony's paid for the association thing. Like, if you think Hitman mm. through VR, you're thinking PSVR, but then maybe we're watching PC gameplay because it does look a lot better than most... Uh, a lot better than any PSVR stuff, I would say, for sure. Like, it looks a lot smoother. The character models look better. Um, the depth of field, I guess you'd call it, like, for, from what they show in, in the gameplay, looks a lot better than all PSVR games. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how, how how that continues. But, yeah, I just want to, once again, shout out to my tinfoil hat theory, theory. They never show the move controllers. Never show it. Keep your eyes and your whistles on that one. Uh, and if you're looking for some Beat Saber stuff to play, randomly, they just announced that it's out now. Uh, 11 classic songs from Hybrid Theory, Mid Meteoria, and Minutes to Minute. What? Minutes to Midnight, sorry. Uh, arrive on PSVR today. Yes, there is a Linkin Park Beat Saber DLC pack out right now. The full track list is Bleed It Out, Breaking the Habit, Faint, Give Up, In, Given Up, In The End, New Divide, Now I'm One Step Closer, Paper Cup, Somewhere I Belong, What I've Done. Ash, you're a bigger Linkin Park fan than I am. Is there something you're, you, 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 you're jumping into? You reckon? Yeah, I think so. Um, it'd be cool to play Beat Saber with those tracks playing, all quite high tempo, you know, pump up songs. Um I really like the aesthetic of the the track they've done. Um, it's a tunnel yeah. based on the one in the what was it? One Step Closer music video. And uh, it's also got that hybrid theory color design as well. So, yeah, they've done a really good job uh, on this one. 
yeah, I like that they keep changing up the uh, the backgrounds or whatever they call it. Yeah, they've been slightly changing and playing around with them. Uh, the other thing I think that's worth noting with this DLC is obviously we've had Green Day before it, but uh, I think seeing them put this one out means they're continuing to try and uh, explore rock or other genres that aren't just dance, dance music, I guess. The, yeah. yeah, electronic music, which is good because that was one of the complaints a lot of people had, I guess. They were like, I enjoy playing Beat Saber. It's a great game. However electronic music isn't my <laughs> favorite in the world can yeah. i get some other stuff on here so uh this is cool to see yeah although um, you you see some of the beat say beat saber streamers and that kind of stuff they do all sorts of music well they on the pc version they just do the, yeah, the mods and that kind of stuff so. mod stuff just anything with a beat pretty much yeah You've, Which, they're probably somebody doing it i'm still waiting for them to, to pull mods what i reckon one day that's just going to end and people are going to get so angry, but I, I can see an ending. Again, my 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 reasoning is I know it's been a while now, but I'm 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 still sticking to it. But my reasoning is when they were brought by Facebook. Oh, yeah. that's like the longer you keep mod support in the game, is less money people will spend on the DLC packs. And you're just kind of opening yourself up to. Some sort Any of kind of lawsuits somebody. or legal issues or stuff like that, yeah. So I remember saying it. I know they were brought out at the end of last year, or that was at least when the deal was like announced. And I think it, it took obviously a couple of months to probably fully go through. But so it's been a while now. But I I still think that'll happen eventually because you you know you look at this they 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 do this Lincoln Park pack, and probably most of these songs are already. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you could probably just do custom beat mats download them already whereas people are playing on um psvr or even like uh like i've got oculus quest like if, unless you're unless you're hooking oculus quest and by um playing it via your pc you can't do custom tracks that way either so it, it's basically just the the pc people there, there's an up there's a swings and roundabouts to that though which is that a lot of the big time streamers that stream beat saber obviously play play the custom beat tracks stuff whatever you call it so you'd, you're kind of shooting the people that support you the most but i still think it'll happen because from a, from a business standpoint i would be like i guess that makes sense like i can't i know people are going to get angry but i understand what you where you come from yeah. uh and then our last ps vr story is about the psvr3 yeah that's right so upload vr rights this gets kind of confusing so stick with a recent a recently posted job listing from sony corp in japan confirms that the company is working on a next generation vr head mounted display so that part's confirmed they continue the listing states via google translate Quote, we are developing a next generation VR head mounted display and the company is on the hunt for a team of around 15 people that will be, quote, in charge of mechanical design of the lens barrel supporting the optical system, small and lightweight, lightweight housing, heat radiation design, development of jig for optical system evaluation, etc. end quote. Uh, at first though, this, at first thought, this might appear to confirm the much highly anticipated PSVR 2 headset for PS5, but it might not be as simple as that. For starters, the job listing is directly from the wider Sony Corporation and not Sony Interactive Entertainment, the division of the company that runs a PlayStation operation. Plus, one part of the translated text states that the job is to develop a mechanism for a headset uh, with, quote, with a view to five years from now. The translation is entirely clear, but this could be suggesting that the role is to work on a headset to release five years from now, rather than a device releasing five years after the original PSVR, which launched in 2016. Could this, instead of being the beginnings of a headset that will succeed uh, PS2, PSVR 2, like dare we say it, PSVR 3, or is the wider Sony Corp working on a VR headset beyond PSVR branding, perhaps a standalone system or something like PCs. 
All the interesting notes in the list include mention of, quote, delivering beautiful images and comfortable ease of use to customers, end quote. Whatever comes of this, it definitely seems like Sony is still committed to VR for the long term. We know that the PS5 will launch this holiday season, supports the original PSVR headset, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest that the PSVR 2 is in works. So, basically, you can, t- you can take this in two directions. The, 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 the main ones I bring up there. If they're saying that they're, they're gra- gathering job lists, I think if they're gathering job listings for a PS VR 2 now, they're so fucking far behind that I, I can't believe that's what it is because that is utterly ridiculous. Mm. Like I, the, the PS VR 2 cannot come out five years from now. That is disgusting. That is just dumb. Uh, that The PS VR headset's already so far behind technology. Imagine if it came out five years from now. It would be absolutely fucking obsolete. Everyone, no one would be playing it. That's just absurd. Mm. Uh, so then obviously it is like, well, maybe the PS VR 2 is already kicking around. Maybe that is a thing they're planning to launch next year. Um, or if, if, so this could be the PS VR 3 or as they kind of point out here, since it's not being de- developed by the interactive entertainment s- section, it could be they're trying to build a, VR headset that's able to plug into your PC as well. It would be a PSVR headset for Sony, not mm. PlayStation. Yes, for yes, yes. And then something we've kind of hinted that we've talked about before is like, so if if the, if they build a headset that can that plugs into everything, so your PS5 and your PC, that means that Sony can then port over all their exclusives. Uh, or up, upgrade them, port them over, and start making some more money that way. So five years from now, you see um, fucking Iron Man and uh, what's that one? The shooty, shooty London Heist, whatever. All that sort of stuff could be... Up- Blood and you, Truth. That's the one, Blood and Truth. You could see all those being um, not ported, because obviously they'll be super old by then, but uh, up, up, you could upgrade those games and then port them over if they release a new headset. I think mm. that's probably the thing that makes the most sense. Like, if they've already... I I like to believe, and I... I it, they better not be not true. Like, I like to believe that the PSVR 2 is coming next year because the, the PSVR headset's already just so far, getting so far behind every other headset on the yep. marketplace that they need to put one out next year or else I just think that the the their VR is just going to become completely obsolete. Like, it, it already stands out as being so far behind. It's going to be obsolete by the time next year because yep. uh, Facebook and Oculus, they're going to put out new ones later this year or next year or whenever. Um, fucking indexes over there costing $1,000 and being the most expensive, ridiculous thing you can buy. Before and- shipping. Yeah, before shipping, yeah. Uh, but that's just leaps and bounds above everything. So yeah, it wouldn't be, you, you know, if you look at it from a business plan, maybe it is like, hey, we're putting out the PS- VR 2 next year for the PS5, and then five years roughly, because, y- you know, that it could be sooner or, or later, I guess. Mm. Our We're not going to do a PSVR 3. We're going to develop something that's top of the line can play on everything because then yeah. they could yeah because then they could still have the psvr2 kicking around for people to keep <clears throat> on their ps5s wouldn't need to upgrade maybe not and then for the people who want to upgrade to a better one it can plug into your ps5 it can plug into your pc you can play all the games sony could have their own pc fucking vr launcher who knows yeah what do you reckon? And you I mean, even agree? then, yeah. I mean, that makes the most sense, like that line. Uh, and then potentially you can still do a PSVR 3 that's exclusive to PlayStation yeah, at a lower price one. point. A cheaper yeah. one, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, you're like, oh, the new one isn't even out. Why are they planning for the next one? Uh, I feel like, obviously, these headsets are coming, their lifespan is much quicker than the actual oh. consoles. So they're obviously going to start working for the next one. ASAP. Yeah. Uh, and if they're hiring more people, I imagine the team that's currently working on it will be staying on, you would assume, for the next one. So they're just getting beefing up their team to obviously think it's going to be a bigger deal down the line. I reckon that 
because Sony brought into the VR stuff sort of early, mm-hmm. relatively early. I think maybe they didn't realize how quickly the technology would oh, move. Development, yeah. Yeah. And it is kind of weird in that front because obviously when they brought it out and Shuhei kept comparing it to the PS1, but the PS1 was around for however many years before the PS2, whereas VR headsets are just moving at such a substantially faster rate with technology. Um, it, it's like a weird world where it, it it's only like several years ago and VR games were pretty basic, you know, like just pick up stuff and whatever. And now it's a couple of years later, they're way more cinematic and whatever. People are just learning how to develop for them so much farther, um, farther, farther, sure. Uh, faster than <laughs> anything else. Um, so maybe they, they, they didn't really plan to have to, to, to do this sort of stuff. And there's no really, there's no, there's no way, I guess, to, to build a headset that's, um, upgradable like you know there's no it's like a headset's a headset it has a screen in it has it has its little chip in it off you go i think that makes the most sense though that would make the or they could do the other one third alternative as i just see someone point out in the comment section on this article actually is someone says they really hope they're doing out a, a quest style headset which could be connected to the ps5 as well so that that Ooh. could be a um, that could be a, a thing as well, I guess. Instead of going to your PC, but it could go to your PC as well. Who knows? Alrighty. That'll do it for this week's episode of Platinum Explosion. You can follow us on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. You can suggest topics or send in questions for the show by emailing mail at explosionnetwork.com with the subject line Platinum Explosion. And until next week, remember that every trophy counts. Hey, don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening and you can drop a review if you can. Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExplosionNetwork.com and please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Ko-fi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.